What distinguishes a diamond player from a radiant pro? When watching a radiant player, you may notice their exceptional aim or how they just make the game look easy. However, there are greater differences lurking beneath the surface that may not be apparent unless you get inside the mind of a radiant player. In this video, we will analyze TSM Kempeki's Omen game on Ascent and compare it directly to my game on the same map with the same agent. This will provide us with a better understanding of what separates a radiant pro player versus your typical diamond player. I'm chill and let's get into it. Let's take a look at Kampeki's game starting at round two. Kampeki starts the round by jiggle peeking a main for info and begins walking back towards Jet so he keeps his presence unknown to the enemy who could be playing slow in a lobby. In my game, I didn't even think about my own presence being known, so I sprinted through tree to rotate. In this situation, it was okay because it's pistol round, but in general, denying the attacker's info is important. Kampeki stays A site because Jet was fighting mid, and they could still be playing slow A main. He considers smoking Cat for the Jet, and I believe his thought process here was to wait for the Jet to get a pick and smoke right after. The KJ also comes to support, and since they're showing a lot of presence mid, Kampeki smokes main to get into a position where where he can help his jet and KJ fight for tree. In my clip, I smoke mid late after they pick my mid teammate, and I should have smoked garage instead due to the turret going off. This slower, less accurate decision making is what separates a radiant controller versus a diamond one. When deciding where to smoke, you have to consider what the smoke is doing for your team, how it's affecting the enemies, and the timing of the smoke. Halfway through this round, Kempeki hears a heavy mid push and then decides to use this powerful one way at door and tries to get his killjoy to play <laughs> stairs so they can take advantage of the one way as mid attackers scale through market. Unfortunately, they play too passive and the one way is wasted. So if you're ever upset that you call play for your teammates who don't listen, don't worry, it still happens in high radiant lobbies. But when comparing this again to my clip on round 9, instead of smoking mid late, I could have 1. Smoke garage due to the turret going off, and 2. Thrown the same one way smoke market. This would have taken some of the pressure off of my B teammates and allowed me to rotate towards them. In round 6, Kampeki is playing tree with teammates since the attackers have primarily been taking mid and B. They surprise them by going A main, so Kampeki decides to blind the push as they head site, and you'll notice that he blinds the jet. In my VOD, I had an opportunity to flash A to take site and was worried about blinding my teammate. Even though it seems counterintuitive, your teammates will sometimes become collateral damage when using abilities if the potential reward of the ability can help win the round. In Kampeki's situation, it's even less of an issue because he counter blinds right after the enemy blinds them. The jet is blind regardless. Same idea with Sovol. Sometimes your teammates will get in the way and become collateral damage, but you can't worry about that when the opportunity to get a pick or make a play presents itself. Towards the end of round 8, Kempeki comms that Cypher may grab op mid because earlier in the round, his teammate died with the op. Marshall, he might gone the op cat. Kempeki has the awareness of what the enemy's win condition is. In this case, Kempeki thinks that the Cypher will most likely use the op to save for next round. This changes when the Cypher gets a pick and switches to a Vandal. The Cypher may have decided that going for kills to hurt the defender's economy was more important than saving the op, which ended up being the wrong decision. In my clip, I neglected to think about what the enemy was thinking in the moment. After my mid and A player die, I am alone A. The enemy is likely to speed up and push me. In this scenario, I have to either make a play or try to get with my teammates since we're on man disadvantage. In Kampeki's round, his awareness of the economy allowed him to predict how the Cypher would play. This is the kind of awareness you want to have when pushing towards those higher ranks. Switching over to attack, we have some pre-round plans from Kampeki and the Yoru. I'm gonna TP hell, <laughs> so my clone didn't flash out, TP hell, and then you guys can get Down to dodge the uh, knife. I'll flash Jin. Having those plans goes a long way in comp, and it's always good to have some plan going into an attack round. Kempeki calls his plan of smoking door in heaven while blinding Jen for the jet to dash. This is a very common omen execute on A, and it can be very effective. Then he plays in hell to jump classic right click. Notice how fast the execute is here. They basically take A main for free and clear sight in a matter of seconds. If you're not fast enough on pistol round sight executes, you could be giving the defenders a chance to flood out as you're attempting the plant and lose the round. The comms are also on point and spoken with urgency, so the teammates react as quickly as possible to them. I want to show this clip where we actually have similar site entries. 
We took space with speed and good timing off the blind and jet dash, allowing us to get two picks and take the site completely. On round 22, Kempeki and his team do a similar play that my team attempted. Here are some of the similarities and differences that make Kempeki's lurk more correct than my attempt. Each attack round has either been a B or A 5-man push, and there hasn't been a lurk mid, making the lurk on this round more unexpected. We both smoke mid, which tells the enemy there's a potential A split coming. Both our teammates are making noise and showing presence A. Okay, so now for the differences. Since Kempeki's team has a Sova, they can use a default recon dart for showing presence in mid. In my game, we didn't have a Sova for recon, so my flash becomes more valuable on site executes, which makes lurking right now detrimental to the site execute. We also didn't have a player on B, so I would have had to be wary of the B player pushing out of a garage, and the cubby player peeking cat. Kenpeki is less worried about the push out of B since the Yoro is there and his smoke allows him to focus on the peak from mid cubby. He uses the elevated edge of cat as an off angle to walk up. Now he positions himself in this spot right behind the box stack in mid. This is a great lurk position as you can get a lot of info on enemy rotations informing your teammates of this information. Unfortunately, the enemy omen walks out cat and catches Kempeki off guard. Now, according to Kempeki, he regularly gets stream sniped, which isn't surprising, and the omen looking at this position is pretty uncommon, especially since Kempeki never lurked mid this half. Regardless, the idea to lurk this round made sense, and this is a clear example of the difference between my decision making and and his. During this round, Kempeki throws a one-way smoke door, which makes it almost impossible for enemies to come out unless they have a flash. He routes to hell and flashes heaven while playing off a teammate Sova dart, which if the enemy gets blinded, they can't shoot, potentially allowing for a wall bang from Kempeki through hell. This play allows him to take control of heaven and hold an angle on jet. When you look at my clip, it's a slightly different scenario, but we do the same 5-man A execute. Since I'm a little late, I can't help my teammates with the blind. I had a smoke after I planted, which could have prevented the Killjoy from pushing out, and my flash could have been used to kill one of the defenders who were separated at the moment. Understanding what your win condition is can help you determine how you can optimize your potential to win a given round. And finally, the last round of the game. The Yoro has ult and becomes the info gatherer for their rush to A. Kampeki watches his minimap to see where the Yoro spots enemies and calls it out immediately. One sight. Once he spots enemies on the minimap, he then flashes as the team picks up two kills. After that, they clean up the last two, and it's GG's. In a similar clip, I don't have the convenience of the Yoro ult, but there are other problems with our play on this round. First, we are way too slow to hit the site. The smoke mid and lack of presence B could have given them enough information that all of us are likely hitting A. Our map control is essentially non-existent. There wasn't a plan so my smokes were late and I didn't blind to allow my jet to take space or get a pick. Our rush quickly fell apart and the defenders have already won. If we showed presence elsewhere on the map and then quickly executed with a plan, we would have had a much better conversion on this round. And that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see from me next. Subscribe for more guides and check out this one next for more. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.